When the sites for restoration have been selected, it is time for harvesting and planting of shoots. In this video, we will take you through the key steps in this part of the restoration process. A large-scale restoration of thousands to ten thousands of square meters will take several weeks or months to carry out and therefore need careful planning. Calm weather conditions with clear water is needed for both harvesting and planting, so the planning also involves following the weather forecast. Since the harvested shoots should be planted as soon as possible after harvest, it is recommended not to harvest more shoots than what can be planted the following days, and plan to harvest shoots the first day and plant them the second day. At least two different donor meadows should be used for harvest of eelgrass shoots for the restoration. These meadows should also be used as reference meadows and be compared to the restored meadow during monitoring and evaluation of the restoration. If possible, choose donor meadows from areas with similar physical exposure, sediment type and depth as the restored sites. See fact sheet 5.3 in the handbook for how to calculate the total amount of shoots needed and the amount of shoots that could be planted per day for each dive team. For Swedish waters, we recommend to use the single shoot method for restoration, where a single shoot is harvested without sediment and planted by hand. This method is presented and demonstrated in the second video on site selection. The shoots harvested for restoration should be mature vegetative shoots, approximately 20 to 50 cm long, with a 5 to 10 cm long rhizome, with roots containing at least three internodes. So here we have two different kinds of shoots, a vegetative shoot and a reproductive shoot. They are very different. The vegetative shoots is just some leaves coming from a stem, while the flower shoot or reproductive shoot, it has sort of branching leaves coming from, from the stem. Shoots of the correct size are usually found in the shallower part of the meadow where they can be easily harvested by divers or even snorkelers if they can be reached from the surface. Harvest the shoot one by one by hand and only pick about every third shoot from the meadow. Studies have shown that the meadow is not negatively affected when harvested this way. Harvested areas in the meadow should be temporarily marked with buoys to avoid harvesting the same area more than once. The shoots are harvested by selecting a 20 to 50 cm long end shoot of the meadow. Trace the stem of the shoot with the hand down into the sediment 5 to 10 cm and break the rhizome with the fingers. Remove sediments from the roots by shaking the shoot in the water. Move against the current direction during the harvest to maintain the best visibility in the water. Collect approximately 50 shoots in one hand and then place a rubber band carefully around the lower part of the stem. The bundles of 50 shoots are placed in a net bag that is attached to the diver. This way the shoots are well organized and can be used directly for planting. When a dive bag is full, the shoots are transferred to a larger bag by the boat where they are kept in the water during the duration of the harvesting. To avoid that the collected shoots dry out, the shoots must be kept moist at all times. During transportation they should be covered to reduce evaporation. The easiest way to store the shoots overnight before planting is to place the bags under water with heavy weights on the restoration site. If this is not possible, they can also be stored in a tank with aeration. During the planting phase of the restoration, a key aspect is how far apart individual shoots should be planted. This should be based on the results from the test planting and can vary between 25 and 50 centimeters. To facilitate the planting, it is recommended that smaller planting areas of about 10 by 10 meters are marked with lines on the bottom on all sides of the area, where the planting distance is also marked. These planting units should be of a size that can be planted by a diver in a day. The planting unit is then moved to an adjacent area until the whole eelgrass bed is planted. Depending on the topography of the area and optimal planting depths, the shape of the planting area may have to be adjusted. The restoration is started by planting one row of shoots along the upstream side of the planting unit, next to the line where the correct planting distance is also marked. When the first row is completed, the second row is started parallel with the first, where the distance between the rows is the same as the planting distance. 
The guidelines help the divers find the correct distance. When planting the subsequent rows, the previous planted shoots are used as guides to maintain a correct planting distance. The same procedure is followed until the whole planting unit is completed. As mentioned before, we recommend that the shoots are planted using the single shoot method, where the shoots are pushed down into the sediment one by one with the fingers. This planting method is demonstrated in detail in video 2. Since the newly planted shoots are extra sensitive to disturbance during the first days, it is important not to swim or navigate with boats over newly planted beds. Mark the corners of the planted area with buoys, put up signs and inform locals of the restoration to avoid that boaters and swimmers disturb the plantation.